Halo CE, or Halo Combat Evolved, as the title is technically, is the very first Halo game that came out. And as a kid, quite frankly, it kind of confused me why Halo 2 and Halo 3 came out whenever Halo CE was, you know, Halo Combat Evolved and not just Halo or Halo 1. It was, it was really quite confusing as a kid. But then the day, it was my very first Halo game, and I would presume for a lot of people it was as well. Halo 1 and Halo 2, or Halo Combat Evolved rather than Halo 2, were probably the games that long-term fans played first. And, well, Halo 3 is in there as well. Halo Combat Evolved really stands out for a lot of people because it was the first Halo game. And so obviously, a lot of people have some emotional attachment with it. I know I do, because like I said, it was the first Halo game I played way back when in the day, which I think was around 2006 or so. So about 10 years ago, which is crazy to think, you know, given the age I was back then. Not because I was playing that kind of game, but just think that was 10 years ago. And while I do love Halo Combat Evolved, I know that a lot of other people do too. It, does have some parts that I can disagree with, and I will obviously make those clear in this list today as I count down, in my opinion, the top 10 Halo Combat Evolved missions. And they will be in order of my preference, not necessarily anything philosophical, not necessarily anything graphical, just in my opinion. So let's start off with number 10, which comes in as keys. Alright, let's start this list off with a bang. Or actually, not yet, let's start off with a slow paced level with reused textures and assets everywhere, which is fun, I guess. And yes, I know that it's the same Covenant ship from the earlier mission, but at the same time, that just means it has to be so much more different. And besides the flood and some debris, there isn't really much of a difference. So it kind of ruins the level for me, they didn't really do much with it. Number 9 is the Truth and Reconciliation. Given my previous entry, you probably saw this coming somewhere at the top rather bottom top of the list as in like worse or is it bottom i can never really tell with these confidence while the introduction to this level is interesting at first once you get into the ship well things take a turn to start off you have to partake in a wave defense in a small room where enemies sometimes get stuck and force you to restart the level and while the rest of the level is you running around a covenant ship for potentially half an hour while well, trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. Of course, if there were at least subtle hints where we would have been and where we haven't, or at least a simple marker here or there, the level wouldn't be so bad to deal with. But at the end of the day, like a lot of missions in Halo Combat Evolved, it really lacks some serious navigation, or even basic navigation for that matter. Number eight is the library. Okay, okay, I can, I can hear your outrage now. I mean, trust me, I, I heard it before, but damn. Just come down for a moment, all right? Now look. I know this is probably the most hated actual level in the history of the series, but as much as I totally get that with that being said, I can tell it can be a little tedious and annoying to play through, and is quite a long mission to complete. God help your soul if you try to complete it on Legendary Lasso, I'd rather play this mission and actually have some actual tense combat scenarios than play quickscope in a Covenant ship, let alone run around in one endless lane and get lost in the unlabeled corridors. Does that mean this is a fun mission? Hell no. But it is slightly more interesting of level and an environment that it just barely passes over the previous two spots for that very reason. And frankly, I'm going to say now Halo Combat Evolved has some rather uninteresting missions when compared to missions come later in the series. That doesn't mean that they're bad, doesn't mean I hate Halo CE. But I have to say, I do not spend my time replaying this campaign unless I have a reason to. So, ultimately it comes down to what is more interesting, and that's why this mission, however slightly, comes in at the number 8 spot. Number 7 is 343 Guilty Spark. Let's be honest here for a moment about this mission, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, back in the day whenever this game came out, or even when it was just me playing the PC port as a 10 year old kid, this mission was scary as hell. Even before you find the flood for the first time, this mission had a lot going for it in a freak level, not to mention when the flood actually started attacking you and you're frantically trying to figure out where the hell you came from, so you can just book right out of there. But as scary as that is, it's also a prime example of the Halo navigation system, or lack thereof, going wrong. On nearly every level in this game, you get lost very easily. And not only can you get lost very easily, but you do. <laughs> very easily. And this mission is a prime example of that. I mean, it's not a 
bad mission for, in this case, it almost kind of helps with the atmosphere. But at the same time, when you have to look up forms to figure out how to get through the level, because yes, YouTube still wasn't a thing at this time, which is really weird to say, frankly. That means that maybe the level took it a little too far. Maybe that is us, as players, not being cautious of our surroundings, but it did get frustrating after some time, more so to me than the library, frankly. But it isn't a terrible mission, and it is easy to get lost, and really it kind of kills the mood of the I've got to get out of here to I hate this level very quickly. And I can say that with certainty from personal experience. So I'm going to be really honest here. I think I speak for a lot of players, especially you newbies, who think Sprint has always been in Halo when I say, fuck these levels in particular. Well, now that that's out of the way, maybe I, why do I hate these missions so much? You're probably thinking to yourself, I like Halo. I, I really do, obviously. My channel's kind of a testament to that. A testament to your sins, if you will. If you got that reference, you got a bingo right there. Just, just check off that box here. You got a free puppy. It did its job, but with that being said, boy, did it have some downright upsetting missions. And you may be surprised that if I hate both these missions so much, why they are tied so high in the list. As I said before, it's not like the previous missions were shining examples of what made CE fun. Rather the opposite, really. But these two missions are so annoying that, frankly, I didn't know what was more annoying. Finding your way to the control room for half an hour or nearly destroying all the life in the galaxy to only be told that you have to go all the way back. It's the same mission in reverse. You choose which one you despise more playing through and put it at the lower position, but to me, when I played this part of the game for the first time and realized I had to walk all the way back where I came from, and that was after getting lost several times on the way there, mind you, I nearly rage quit the game. It was so annoying, unneeded, and frankly just plain bad. It's missions like these that make both sides of the whole sprint debate come into agreement. Number four is the silent cartographer. I'm not gonna lie, what this mission lacks in terms of exploration, it really makes up for in interest. Who would have thought that a tiny little island in the middle of nowhere would be so important? Not to mention that the Death Island map from the multiplayer, which is only available on the PC back in the day by the way. But this mission is honestly one of those missions I can go back and play from the original campaign and generally have a good time. It's not a spectacular map on by any means for that matter, but it is a little fun to play through with some cool engagements later on. So here it is at number four. Number three is a Pillar of Autumn. What can I say? This level introduced me to Halo, and I know some of you may have played a level later on in the series as an introduction to Halo, but this level is what got me into Halo, and, and obviously for a lot of other people too. Well, frankly, it's nothing too fancy. It does set you in some rather frantic quarters for tight engagements, which are pretty cool set pieces and introduce you to the game, and granted, the rest of the game is pretty timid in comparison. The fact of the matter is that it is the mission that's supposed to get you into this adventure, and it did just that. Nothing visually or emotionally stunning, unless it's your first playthrough, but it does a good job at the introduction to Halo as a series. Getting used to the, the movement, mechanics, and combat. It has a little bit of everything, dark corridors, corridors filled with enemies, a little bit of everything. Number two comes in at Halo. I mean, Really, we all knew it had to be up here at this stage, at least if not number one, at least number two. I'm not going to set it as number one simply because it's the first time we saw Halo. It is a pretty basic rescue mission throughout, going from point to point, shooting Covenant so Pelican can eventually come and rescue the survivors. But it does get props for giving us the first look at Halo, sure. Even if it's not a great mission as far as mechanics, it is what it is. It was the first time we saw Halo for a lot of players, so it's gotta be up here somewhere. And coming in at number one, obviously it's going to be the Mog. I'm going to be completely honest here, the mission itself, enjoyable. The fight to the control room is alright. The fight to the reactors, okay. The grenade and rocket spam meme, it's okay, I guess. I mean, nothing truly dynamic, you know. But that ending Warthog run, epic. And to be honest, back when I had the PC port, I would play this mission just to get to the Warthog ending run. I mean, can you really deny the intensity of that experience? Let alone for a kid who's only played the early Mario Kart games to be in a vehicle and play through the sequence this amazing. And that jump, ah, oh, it makes my stomach turn every time. So that was my list for Halo Combat Evolved, all ranked in the order that I personally felt it should be, at least in my opinion, as far as enjoyability. Like I said, Halo Combat Evolved is the very first Halo game I got into. I kind of heard about it from Halo 3 and 
you know, a little bit of Halo 2, but I didn't really know much about it. But Halo 1 is, or Halo Combat Evolved, rather, is the very first Halo game that I actually played, that I actually experienced, that I actually really saw. And so, actually being able to make this list and say, yes, I did start with Halo 3, and I did not start with Halo Reach, or, you know, Halo 5, going back to playing the older games, I remember playing these games as a kid. I would like to think that this, you know, whole list isn't as biased as some of the list to come may be, to be fair. But like I said, Halo Combat Evolved did have some flaws, but definitely did have some great moments too. So let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite mission from the Halo Combat Evolved campaign? What is your least favorite? Go ahead and rank them in order in comments down below. Tell us why. Give us a little bit of a summary. And don't just say that Warthog run. Although I will thumbs up you know, if you do that, because I totally agree with that. But some other people may need a little bit more justification. So thank you guys for watching, listening, or whatever you may be doing. And I will see you next time.